up everyone it's Julie here and today I've got a quick little video for you because it's already five o'clock and I am just filming this now in the spirit of today being the release of Fuller House which I have already watched two episodes of and it's great and me wearing my Central Perk shirt I thought I'd do a video today about epilogues and epilogue series and epilogues in general and why I love them and some of my favorite epilogues and just what I think an epilogue should be because I've been watching Fuller House and I've been thinking about it and just loving epilogues so much so I just thought I'd talk about that. So the thing is I'm so engrossed in stories whether it be TV or a movie or a book or whatever that I don't just see the story as the beginning and the end that we're presented no matter how long the series is. I see these characters as people and real people and their world and I imagine them having lives and I love when I fall in love with these characters you feel like they're a part of your life and I want to go and find out what's happening in their life forever. Falling in love with a good character is like having a best friend or just a friend in your life and you wouldn't want to just abandon a friend at some point in your life and not find out what's happening about them even though there are friendships that you break off after a while maybe in 10 years it's nice to know where your friends are or just the people you've known in your life it's nice to know what happens to people to have closure so when you think about these stories and these characters as so whole and so real it's really really satisfying to have some sort of future look no matter how vague or random or everyday life normal that look into the future is. Basically, for an epilogue, for me, it can be anything and I'd be happy. It's why I'd read a book about Harry, Ron, and Hermione going to the grocery store together. Why I'm so excited for Curtis Child! I love one of my favorite characters who were younger or teenagers or anything at the end of their series, whether movie, book, TV, whatever, and seeing in the epilogue that they have kids and they're married, and it just makes me really happy. It's like watching the end of a Disney movie, getting that happily ever after. Speaking of Disney new movies, that's why I love Disney sequels, even though a lot of people hate them. I love, like, all the Disney sequels, except Pocahontas 2. We don't talk about that. But I just love all the Disney sequels, even things like Cinderella 2 that are basically just, like, kids' TV episodes, because I get to continue on with the story. And the story never has to end if you have something to do with an epilogue. Some people hate epilogues like Rick Riordan, which is really upsetting because we're not going to get a Percy Jackson epilogue. But just epilogues are great, okay? And they're one of my favorite things. So I'd like to talk about some of my favorite epilogues. Obviously, my favorite epilogue of all time is the epilogue from Harry Potter at the end of Deathly Hollows. Some people hated that epilogue and I don't get why. For me... The Harry Potter epilogue is everything that an epilogue should be. You see that Harry and Ginny are married, Ron and Hermione are married, Neville is teaching herbology at Hogwarts, um, Draco found someone to marry and he's civil with Harry, you know, um, Teddy is happy, Victoire, and, oh yeah, Teddy and Victoire are dating. And, you know, you find out what happens to all the big characters that you really cared about. And you see that they're all happy. And the last line of Harry Potter being all was well, and that being the epilogue, is really important. The Harry Potter epilogue also includes a trend that I really, really, really love in epilogues, which is kind of mimicking what the parents in the situation, if there's kids, or what the original characters faced at the beginning of their story. So Harry Potter, Harry, Ron, and Hermione's story started when they all went off to Hogwarts together on the train, and Harry Potter ends with watching Harry, Ron, and Hermione's kids get on the train and go to Hogwarts. And I don't know, that's just really satisfying to me. Another epilogue that I really, really love is the Hunger Games epilogue. Now the Hunger Games epilogue was a little short, I'll admit, but Again, Katniss and Peter are married, they have kids, this is what's happening here, this is what's happening there, and it just gives me all the feels. It gives me all the feels to know that my OTPs are married and have kids, to have that confirmation, like, hey, this is what's going on. Another favorite epilogue is the epilogue from where she went from the If I Stay duology, where it's only a few years after the last chapter of the book, but we do see that Mia and Adam are together. Adam is a recording star, and he's going out solo now after quitting the band, and all his songs are basically about him and Mia, and they're happy. <laughs> yeah. 
Another trend in epilogues that I totally, totally, totally love lately is when authors can't give up their characters. And this is kind of similar to Fuller House, except Fuller House takes place 28 years in the future. I'm more talking about now with stuff like Kingdom Keepers and Percy Jackson, how we'll have like three more series tacked on to that original series that are spin-offs, that are different stories and different plot lines, but still feature the same original characters. And they haven't grown up, it's just another continuation. And I think that's a really cool way of putting it, because when you add too many books to a single series, it can get awkward, because once you wrap up the story of a series, like with The Last Olympian, or The Insider, in terms of Kingdom Keepers, that story that was in the original series is wrapped up, and to start a whole new story that has to be developed is weird to do it at the end of the series, but to start a new series is just this really cool new trend that authors are doing. And as someone who loves epilogues, I love it. Now, eventually, all these series that have series tacked onto them do have to end. And I cannot wait to see what Ridley might do as an epilogue for Kingdom Keepers when that finally ends. I would love something similar to Harry Potter. The epilogue that I've always imagined for Kingdom Keepers is seeing them all in Disney together with their kids. With their kids. Yay. In Disney starting off right where they began. I actually was working on a fanfiction at one point that I sort of lost the muse for, where the Kingdom Keepers had kids, the Overtakers came back, now their kids were fighting them, but it was perfect for me because that's exactly the epilogue that I love. That's exactly the kind of epilogue series that I love, the kind of epilogue that we're seeing with Fuller House, where now DJ has kids and the kids are learning to grow and be happy together, just like DJ and Stephanie and Michelle had to learn. I know we're never gonna get an epilogue for Percy Jackson, but it's nice to imagine what could be. We thought Blood of Olympus was the end, but now we're getting Trials of Apollo, an epilogue series, and that's gonna be about Apollo, but Rick Riordan has said we are going to see everybody from PJO. So that's sort of serving as an epilogue, and again, love it, just love to see the story continue. So that's pretty much it for me today. I know this was a quick video and not really in depth, but I just thought I'd share with you one of the trends in books that I really, really love, and that's epilogue. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about epilogues and what your favorite epilogues are. Be they TV or books, I don't care. We generally talk about books here, and that's why I talked about book ones. But I do have some favorite TV epilogues, and I love when TV shows end with quick little epilogues. If a TV show doesn't end in an epilogue, I kind of get upset. But it doesn't always have to be. Like, Friends ending was good. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Goodbye!